Charles Stenek how the events in Turkey might influence uh, the perspective of membership of this country in the European Union and the relationship at home? Well, it's, I think, probably too early to say. I mean, I asked that parliamentary question yesterday to Cathy Ashton, the High Representative. It all depends how this uh, issue ends, really. Uh, and, and, you know, at what point do the protesters feel that they've gained satisfaction? Clearly, there is a lot of tension now in Turkish society. It's quite polarized uh, between those who have the image of Turkey on a more religious, pious basis, which is the view of uh, Tayyip uh, uh, Erdogan, the, uh, the prime minister, and those who have a more traditional, secular, Kemalist uh, Republican attitude uh, and want a more Western-leaning, uh, liberal Turkey where religion is not the major dominant factor in public and political life. So there are clear splits. We know that um, AK party, the, uh, the moderate Islamist party in government of Erdogan and Abdullah Gul, they have about 51-52% of the polls, so they have a majority. But of course, democracy is not just about a kind of tyranny of the majority. It's also about respect for fundamental rights of the minority, particularly a very large minority. And I think that there will have to be some accommodation. Mr. Erdogan has made a very uh, helpful uh, noises about respecting the fact that Turkey is a secular society. But I think things that have happened recently, for instance, the attempts to ban alcohol, which clearly wasn't for medical reasons, it was for religious reasons, or you know, talking about uh, the, the curse of Twitter mm -hmm. uh, or the, all those who drink alcohol or alcoholics and these sort of comments um, are not helpful. And I think the disproportionate <coughs> brutality <coughs> we've seen from the police uh, at the very early stages of the protests in, in Taksim uh, and, in, and in Ghazi, uh, the, which is basically just going to be a redevelopment with a shopping mall and then it became a kind of focal point for the whole nation about dissatisfaction with the way uh, the government's become more authoritarian in, 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 in over the last two or three years. And also the issue of, you know, um, fundamental freedoms, self-censorship of the press, the feeling that there are journalists in prison now uh, because of expressing their, their, their views um, and so on. And so it, it is a tense situation. I mean, four people have been killed. We want to know how they were killed, why they were killed. You know, this needs to be fully investigated. One policeman's been killed. Uh, clearly there must be due process. I think it's very helpful that um, there is now an agreement for the government to meet the protesters. Um, it's very helpful that the Deputy Prime Minister apologised and, 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 and admitted that the police had overreacted, uh, you know, because they started using tear gas and water cannon from day one when there was absolutely no violence from the protesters. They were just having fun and putting up a few banners at the beginning. Uh, and so it is an unfortunate situation. Um, but I don't think it's, you know, I mean, clearly Turkey for some time now has not been really moving much in terms of EU accession because there's been, you know, leaders like Sarkozy before Hollande who said that he was opposed, I mean, Mrs. Merkel, her party is opposed to Turkish membership. So the negotiations are going very, very slowly. And there's also the issue of Cyprus, non-recognition of the Republic of Cyprus, the non-application, adherence to the Ankara protocols, giving the right for Cypriot ships to dock at Turkish ports. So there are lots of concerns. There are human rights concerns about honor killings, about Christian minority rights as Syriac Christians, uh, the right to, you know, for uh, Greek Orthodox priests to train in, in Halfi, which is a monastery which has been closed for 20 years in spite of repeated agreements to reopen it. So there are lots of problems that the EU has faced. But Turkey, at the end of the day, of course, is a democracy. You know, it's one of the biggest democracies in the Islamic world. It's a major military power, strong member of NATO, very loyal ally of NATO. Um, and um, clearly, you know, we don't, we don't want to uh, alienate Turkey. We want to try and um, accommodate Turkey as much as we can. But there are some fundamental issues uh, where clearly these are not negotiable. And one of them is freedom of expression freedom of the press and freedom of people to peacefully manifest their views and protest. And that has been problematic because clearly the, uh, the authorities in Turkey didn't see it that way. You either conform to a vision uh, or you, uh, I'm afraid, get arrested. And that's just not, uh, you know, not a European, Western European model which those of us who defend human rights can subscribe to. And so there has been problems. I, there was a very interesting debate in the Foreign Affairs Committee in this parliament um, last week. It was, uh, I thought, very full, free and frank. Uh, people who are very strong defenders of Turkey, like Andrew Duff and Richard Howitt from the British 
Labour and Liberal parties very critical. Uh, and I think that's, you know, the, the, the Turks should listen to their friends. They're, they're, they're very close friends like those individuals who mean well when they say, you know, uh, what's happened in the last few weeks, uh, last few days really is not acceptable behaviour.